Welcome to the American Cannabis. I am your host, Ella Smith. I want to thank our host, uh, Cannabis Tech, for allowing us to have this webcast today. Um, today I have a company called Trim, T-R-Y-M, uh, that focuses on cannabis-specific farm management software. And we're going to be speaking with Matt Mayberry. Um, Matt, thank you for coming on the show today. It's great to have you. Hey, thank you, Ellis. All right, so the title of this uh, um, podcast today is uh, Three Best Practices for Bottom Line Growth. Matt, if you would, before we kind of jump into this whole presentation, give me a little background on yourself, kind of where you come from and how you ca came to really develop TRIM. Um, you know, I met you at the MJ Biz Conference uh, this year in Vegas, and just, uh, you know, as, as an operator and running growth facilities, uh, we uh, we are always looking to gather analytics, and it's always done through writing it on paper and translating it over into spreadsheets, and uh, we'd love to see kind of how you've come to, uh, you know, in, in your background and other, other industries, what brought you to TRIM, and then we can dive into the presentation and really break down to uh, our audience what this is really all about. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. Yeah, so I'm Matt, and I'm the uh, CEO and co-founder of Trim. And actually, my background is uh, I started out in civil engineering uh, early in my career. And then around the time of the housing crash, I actually uh, moved into uh, the renewable energy industry, uh, focusing on solar. And I spent about 10 years in the solar industry building uh, products, actually not building solar panels, <laughs> surprisingly enough. Uh, I was building uh, hardware and software that really helped improve operational efficiency in the solar industry. And there's actually a lot of similarities to the early solar industry and the cannabis industry. Uh, about 10 years ago, solar was also a very new market. Uh, there were thousands of distributed small businesses uh, that were really struggling to try and figure out how to maintain margins and compete as big money and big industry came into the market. Uh, and so the focus of my career was really helping those small businesses uh, maintain their competitive advantage, install solar panels faster, and maintain their, their profits. Uh, <clears throat> around the time uh, that the uh, solar industry was, was kind of catching its stride in the mainstream, I was looking for uh, another new market to get into. And uh, I don't know very much about cryptocurrency, so my business partner and I decided to get into cannabis because we, we knew quite a bit about <laughs> that from our uh, personal growth career and our uh, uh, our own, uh, in, my, in the case of my business partner, his, some of his professional efforts. Uh, so when we looked at the industry, we saw that there was another opportunity to do the exact same thing, to, to build products to really help these small businesses compete. And uh, that was the genesis of Trim. We, we looked at what the market problem was. We, we interviewed hundreds of growers to figure out how we could help them. And, uh, and we set off to, to build the first farm management software specifically built for cannabis. How long has that been? What's that, what's that timeline from start to date to, to here we are? And I, I love to hear that it's one of those things that started in your garage, I hope you're going to say, right? That American dream story, correct? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a garage, and also we converted uh, a, a, our third bedroom in our house to be our headquarters. And so, uh, it's, yeah, it's definitely the, the Silicon Valley startup story. Um, it's been about a year. We're coming up on our one-year anniversary. Uh, we've spent the bulk of this year really working with a few farms in our private beta to make sure that we uh, built exactly what they needed and uh, tested it to ensure that everything works. And uh, we've been really thrilled with the results that we've got so far. And yeah, MJ VizCon was our uh, official launch, uh, which is where we met you and, and many other exciting uh, cultivation businesses. So yeah, we're, we're thrilled at what we've done in, in a relatively short amount of time, and uh, we're even more excited for what's on the horizon. Well, I appreciate that introduction. Um, I'm excited to dive in here and, and to learn more about this. As you know, you and I have had many conversations. As I've read through the slides, I see some things that I'm excited to learn more about, and uh, hopefully our audience will get uh, some, some value from this as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to you to kind of start this presentation. I will interject with questions uh, from our audience and where I have some myself. And so uh, tell us about, you know, the three best practices from bottom line growth, and let's start the presentation. Absolutely. Thank you. So it, it's clear that cannabis cultivation is hard work. Farming itself is hard work. And to make things more challenging for cannabis specifically, 
there are a lot of market conditions that are really presenting some, some pretty significant challenges to farmers. Uh, the first is that the green rush is happening, right? There's, there's competition that's rushing to the market. People see a strong market opportunity. And so this has caused a significant increase in competition, which has resulted in a pretty dramatic uh, drop in prices. And the impact of this is that cultivator margins are being compressed. <clears throat> uh, the second is that in parallel with the, the rise in competition, businesses are just getting bigger, right? Some businesses started a garage, started in a basement, then they moved to a warehouse. Now they might be in a 200,000 square foot greenhouse or dozens of warehouses. It, it's, but, you know, we've, we've seen a massive scaling of the industry. And as a result, it's become even more challenging for cultivators to manage these large scale operations while also maintaining consistency and continuously developing uh, and producing high quality products. And the third is that the existing tools that are available to growers and that are the, the conventional methodologies that are used uh, for cultivating cannabis don't provide the insights that are really necessary for them to optimize their operations in order to, to deal with the two problems I mentioned previously, the, the scaling and the, and the increase in competition. I think our viewers can definitely, you know, understand from these perspectives that they have probably had some of these hurdles that they've dealt with themselves, um, you know, from running facilities, and we do this all over the U.S. and have multiple projects going on, and being able to track information daily, compile it in enough time to analyze it so that you can make decisions um, for the, your next round or, you know, for the next day, it's, it's, it's very archaic with the tools that we have, and it, it, it's a lot of effort that it, that it takes to really try to keep up with this. And so um, you're hitting some pain points that I personally have dealt with and hopefully our audience has as well. Yeah, that's a, a really good point, Ellis. And as I mentioned, you know, we, in developing TRIM, we, we interviewed uh, initially dozens, but at this point probably hundreds, if not thousands, from uh, the conferences we've attended and uh, the sessions we've attended. And, you know, we, we identified that these are, are pretty consistent challenges that the cultivators have had, regardless of what market they're in. There's, you know, this competition is increasing in every market. Even, uh, so, yeah, it's a, a really good point that you mentioned there. To hit on that first point, specifically the, the increase of competition and the reductions in pricing, uh, the graph that I have here up on the screen visualizes the current prices that exist in the market today in some key markets versus the prices from just one year ago. And what you can see from this is that the change in price over just the last 12 months, in some cases, is over 50%. If you look at Oregon, it's 65%. That is an incredible reduction for any industry. It definitely speaks to how fast the industry is scaling. And because of this, focusing on operational efficiency and, and really getting down to uh, what's driving your, the, the, the profit that in your business uh, is imperative to maintaining viability of your business in this rapidly evolving market. For sure. And you have to look at, you know, at, at what, what are your costs of goods sold? What is it that you can do to reduce those costs? Is it labor? Uh, is it uh, your inputs that it takes to grow the plant? Um, is it switching to LED lights uh, to reduce your power consumption from that lighting as well as your HVAC use? All of those things you've got to be able to look at and be able to measure and see what you can do to really chisel this down so that you can be competitive as these prices are dropping. And, uh, you know, having those tools are going to be imperative. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And that level of granularity that you mentioned is part of what uh, farm management software truly enables. So to make those decisions, if you don't have all of the data that you need, then you're really just going on gut intuition, which is uh, granted in most cases for, for these cultivation businesses comes, uh, you know, they, they're coming with a significant amount of market experience and they've come through some, uh, uh, they've overcome some challenges undoubtedly. Uh, but without knowing what's happening day to day and what you're actually spending on the, these different uh, parts of your P&L that you mentioned, it's really tough to know what's the right thing to invest in and where you should be focusing your efforts. Indeed. 
So we've talked about the problem. Uh, so now let's talk about the solution. The uh, purpose of this presentation, obviously, is the three best practices for bottom line growth in cultivation businesses. And we're speaking specifically to cultivation businesses, but this is really best practices in any organization. The better you can be at these three principles, the more efficient you're going to run your business, and the more uh, streamlined you're going to be. And as a result, the greater profits that you'll appreciate. The first is to implement data collection and management processes and systems. So <clears throat> this isn't just collecting data, but this is actually having a methodology to manage the data and then do something with it. The second is to utilize efficient and reliable team communication and coordination. So again, uh, this isn't just having a methodology that is efficient, but making sure that it's also reliable. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about this uh, in, in later on in the deck, uh, as we will all of these. But just as an example with team communication, uh, just writing something down and having a meeting every morning doesn't work because what if you don't show up that morning? What's your team going to do? So again, the reliable element is also just as important as the efficient methodology with this one. Uh, the third one is to consistently analyze key performance in performance indicators and use those to make informed decisions about your operation. So this is exactly what we were just talking about, Alice. You know, having those KPIs, knowing what they are on a day-to-day -day basis, and then using those to actually drive your business decisions. I think a lot of folks couldn't tell you what a KPI is. I'm dead serious. When you walk in a lot of these growth facilities and there's a mm -hmm. there's a an education and a, a change in how people are looking at these growth facilities and really treating this like this is a manufacturing site and, you know, showing up to work every day um, and having, you know, task management to hold you accountable and time stamping how long it takes you to do this stuff. This is what's super important to really, you know, get out of that basement mindset that you see a lot of these facilities kind of operate under and really taking this to, uh, you know, a competitive business that can maintain and be sustainable. If not, you're going to go out of business. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I, again, couldn't agree more. And that's, that's exactly what, uh, what we're hoping we can help with. So uh, I'll jump into our first uh, best practice now, and that is data collection and management. So as we look at data collection and management, uh, first I want to look at some of the conventional tools of the trade that cultivation businesses are using for this exact purpose. So what type of data am I talking about? The data sources can really be anything within your cultivation business, things like environmental conditions, plant statuses, the location of batches, team members, team locations, what tasks they're doing, how many hours it takes, all of this results in data that, if you uh, choose to record it, can be used for uh, informing business decisions. <clears throat> the way that these are often recorded today within cultivation businesses is either in a notebook or on the trusty whiteboard that you see inside every growth facility. In some cases, you have this on every, uh, you have one that large whiteboard uh, in kind of the communal room, and then you have one of these on the door uh, of every grow, grow room, and then in some cases you even have it all at the end of every bench. And so these whiteboards are used as kind of the, the uh, information source of truth for what should be done, what has been done, what the conditions are, et cetera. Uh, and, and they've worked really effectively for, for many years, but again, unfortunately, as the market has evolved, they're not giving us the information that we need uh, to continuously drive operational excellence within our businesses. And then once this data is collected, either on a whiteboard or, on, uh, or in a notebook, hopefully at some point we actually do something with this data and have some type of a data management process. And, and often the next step in, uh, in this conventional process is to actually take the information from your notebook or from this whiteboard and put it into some type of a system. Most regularly, what I've seen is Excel. <clears throat> and as we look at this process, the, the real challenge with this 
is the timeline from collecting the data to actually getting anything useful from that data. So we call this the collection to insight timeline. So let's say, as an example, you wanted to record temperature and CO2 measurements in the rooms within your growth facility every day. In order to accomplish this, you write a task on a whiteboard. Somebody assigns that task themselves or you tell them to do it. They go into the room. They take the measurements in their notebook. At some point in the future, they enter that or someone else enters that into Excel. And then that data stays in Excel for some undetermined period of time until eventually somebody decides to take that data and do something with it, compile the data and try to gain some type of an insight from it so that they can then draw conclusions and make a business decision. Unfortunately, this process can be quite timely, and in most cases it doesn't actually fully execute. So some part of it occurs, but it doesn't actually finish. And the result uh, looks something like that guy on the end that has uh, given up on trying to figure out how to put together this spreadsheet. Uh, so hopefully your experience is not that dramatic, but uh, it is something that uh, I myself have suffered, have suffered from. You know, data is only as useful as what you do with it. And trying to piece together these fragmented pieces of data from things like <clears throat> labor information, uh, environmental information, all of this stuff to get to uh, some, some very obvious business conclusions uh, it's not always as um, easy as you might expect. And, and it often turns into a lot of time spent collecting the data, a lot of time spent entering the data, and a lot of time spent compiling the data, only to not get the results that you would hope for. Yes, I've lived that firsthand. I've been that person in that picture many, many times and have seen many other people that we've come in to consult to help kind of relieve that pressure to help make sense of information they've collected and to better understand it and how to either replicate you know, positive um, data that has worked and how not to replicate, you know, um, data that shows that we did things wrong. And so uh, it's not easy to compile all this stuff and put it all together and, and really manage it properly. And so um, it's, a, it's a huge pain for me and uh, a lot of folks I know in the space. Absolutely. And then again with this process, it also assumes that that data collection is actually happening, right? So. What happens if that guy that you assigned it to doesn't actually record that measurement for the day? And that day happens to be that day that your air conditioner breaks and you don't have that recorded measurement for, for temperature that day. So there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of potential failure modes in this methodology um, that can result in some pretty inadequate results coming out on the other side. I that's where I think automation can help with this as well and trying to, you know, not rely on the human touch as much to document temperature and humidity for us just for that reason. If you can use other technology, they can really give us real-time information on that as well. On top of, I like to have the human do backup information and data collection, but um, I think it's uh, it's okay to have that redundancy, but really having, uh, you know, other tools to help you be, you know, successful to manage those variables is what's going to be important. That's actually a really good lead in my next slide, Elf. <laughs> um, <laughs> Perfect. So <laughs> uh, let's have a look at what it would, uh, how we could augment that process with farm management software. Uh, so again, looking at the collection to insights timeline, uh, in the case of using an, an app like Trim, the data is automatically collected for sensor data like temperature and humidity. Uh, it's recorded in the app and it's available immediately. And we actually already go ahead and apply insights to it within the TRIM Manager dashboard. So the, what was previously a multi-step process that had a lot of potential failures in it, we've replaced that with a robust, reliable system that can continuously record the insights that you need and then give you uh, that information in real time within your Manager dashboard. Uh, for additional elements uh, beyond just environmental data, you can also record that within the app. And again, that information will be available immediately within the manager dashboard. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that with a, a farm management system like Trim, you, you actually have uh, all of your employees have the, the employee dashboard on their phone so they can see what's happening within the facilities with different patch, uh, batches, uh, <clears throat> environmental conditions, uh, other team members, and they have that available to them in real time. And then you as manager, you can also see uh, all that information uh, on your laptop. And so we've effectively reduced the lag time 
uh, for data collection to Insight. We, there's effectively no lag time. As soon as the information is recorded, it's available for you to view. Perfect. And say with this, are, 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 you, are, are you able to get, I apologize, are you able to get like email no, notifications, no. text message notifications, these things that can really um, give you warnings and updates and keep you to, on, on, on point to ensure that you're able to correct things if things are broken? Yeah, let's say as an example, uh, in one of your grow rooms you had a high temperature alert. Then uh, anyone that is a, a member of that team that is responsible for that facility will get a push notification on their phone that alerts them of that uh, high temperature alert. So uh, whether or not you're at the facility, you'll know. It could be the middle of, of the night, you'll get that alert. Uh, and you can respond to it accordingly. The same thing for, uh, as we get into to team management and task management, the same thing for that. If you get a task that's assigned to you, or if one of your team members completes a task that you've assigned to them, you'll similarly get a push notification so that you can always be updated on what's happening within your business. Okay, great. So the second best practice that I mentioned was a efficient and reliable team management methodology. And the reason that this one is particularly important when we talk about bottom line growth strategies is that labor actually accounts for 46% of cultivation and operational expenses. Uh, it's nearly double your second largest operational expense, which is electricity for indoor cultivators. That, that's a significant opportunity to reduce costs. Even small improvements in how you manage your team can result in dozens, if not thousands, hundreds of thousands of uh, dollars in savings every year. A lot. <laughs> uh, so again, I want to look at kind of the conventional methods that are used for key management. And, you know, we've mentioned a whiteboard a lot, and that's because this is the, the standard method for uh, communicating with our team about what needs to be done within, a, within our business, right? So uh, in a, in a conventional method, you're going to write out the tasks, either for the day or for the week or whatever it may be, and your team's going to accomplish those. The challenge is, what if you're not at the growth facility? What if you have a few facilities and you're in between those or you're traveling to another state? How are you going to know that work is actually being performed according to the plan that you set out as a manager? Or if you're an employee, how do you know that you're actually doing the work in the order or in the, in the time that you, your uh, employer expects you to? And what this often results in is uh, the team management that you see on the right-hand side, which is just text messages, right? And so in this anecdote that I put together here, we've got an employee, uh, or we've got a manager that's reaching out to an employee, and he's asking him if he completed a specific task at the facility called Industry Way. He's asking him if he cut these clones. Uh, the employee says, no, I'm not even at that facility because my other manager told me to come here today. He's doing something completely different at a different facility. Uh, so then the manager now is faced with the idea of trying to figure out who can actually perform the work that he needs to be done for the day. And all of this is a, a, a highly inefficient process, both for the employee and for the manager. And so all of this back and forth is costing you money. Yes, and just you lose a lot of time and uh, miscommunication, tasks get overlooked, don't get complete. It may take you two or three days to really figure out what truly happened. <laughs> and that's, once again, you see this happen all the time, and there's just no way uh, that the people have tried to figure out how to manage this communication. It just um, hasn't, they haven't really find the right resources and tools. Yeah, and in some cases, this is beyond just wasting money with employees. It can have real implications on your crop. Uh, there's a couple of cases that I've heard. Uh, one that comes to mind is a, a team asked uh, an employee to, to flip a schedule in a room to, from veg to bloom. That didn't happen. Uh, the, they assumed that it had. It was like seven days later before they realized that it hadn't happened because it had been marked off on the whiteboard that it was complete, but it actually hadn't been done. And so there's, you know, you, you're – uh, without having a, a, a method to actually monitor this step, uh, it can result in some pretty serious business implications. With, with Trim, you can assign that task. The employee can mark it off as done, obviously. But then in the room, we actually detect the light cycle 
uh, with the sensors that we have installed. And so if the task says that the room was flipped from veg to bloom, but the sensors say differently, then you, you can see that in real time right there in your dashboard or, or even on your phone. I think that's great. You know, and you can see, you know, from a, from a monetary standpoint, you're now seven days behind by having that happen to you and not, you know, having the right tools in place. And this, this is, it's just as important for all your other tasks, whether it's topping and pruning plants weekly to maintain a certain shape and size so that when you go to harvest, you get most production without having these tools to check to see if they got done. And now you get to time to move your plants in the harvest and you've only got two tops versus 20 tops that you need. And you see these kinds of things and employees won't communicate that they didn't do that task that day and no one knows and it gets overlooked. And by the time it's too late, this is this can be detrimental to your business uh, and and really cause some serious harm. And so these tools are imperative. Totally agree. Uh, yeah, and it's uh, yeah. So let's let's take a look actually at, at how Trim or a, a farm management software could help um, improve this system. So uh, what we have, what we see here is two different views. The first is uh, the task management interface, and so. With this, you can easily create, assign, and track tasks for everyone on your team at any of your facilities. And so when you log in for the day, you'll see what tasks you need to be performing. Uh, if you go to all tasks, you can see what everyone in your organization is doing for the day. So you can know uh, who's working, uh, what they're working on, what they've already completed, and what's left to be done. Uh, you can also assign tasks in real time, and as I mentioned, you'll get a push notification on your phone for uh, if you received a task. And when, as a manager, let's say you're traveling in, in another state or even in, at another facility within the same city, if someone finishes something, you can get a push notification that uh, that work has been complete. So you can have that peace of mind that people are working and they're doing what you want them to do, and expectations are set uh, accordingly for the manager and the employee. And, you know, I think the, the number one thing for a good culture within a business is making sure that expectations are set accordingly. Uh, and so, you know, this will really help uh, everyone know what should be done and what has been done and, and help that business thrive. If you look to the, the other side of the screen, we've got uh, a, a section that says cultivation workflows. And what these are are Canada-specific task workflows that we have built based on all of our investigations into the industry. And so the workflow of how you complete these tasks in our app mirrors the way that the work is actually performed in a growth facility. Mm -hmm. And so this is a really unique uh, structure for farm management in the fact that we are entirely focused on cannabis. So every element of our app is focused on how to help cannabis farmers do, uh, actually perform their work and track their work in the most efficient method. We recognize that we don't want to actually add additional work to your uh, team just so you can get the data. So we've made it as simple to use as possible <clears throat> so that from start to finish, it takes seconds to create a task. It takes seconds to say that you've started a task or seconds to record data and actually say that you have completed it. The same exact thing goes for, for batches. Uh, and, you know, we also recognize that not every employee is going to be a full-time employee. You might have some seasonal workers that come in, and so you can't waste time training temporary workers uh, how to use a complicated software system. And so that's why we've really created the most intuitive system that we could create uh, to really allow you to, to track this. And with this, we've created a very efficient and reliable method uh, for your, your team management and collaboration. I'm going to move on to our third best practice, which is to analyze key performance in indicators on a regular basis so that you can then use those to make informed business decisions. So when we say key performance indicators, we've alluded to this throughout the presentation. Uh, but the type of data that I'm referring to is things like plant data, batch data, task data, uh, environmental conditions that you record, uh, or any kind of facility data that you need, such as you know, energy expenses, things like that. Uh, in the conventional case, all of this data is hopefully collected and compiled, and then most likely uh, you use a tool like Excel to try and derive some type of uh, conclusions, like we mentioned previously. 
The uh, challenge of this we've already, I think, hit on pretty uh, uh, thoroughly, <laughs> so I don't think we need to cover it more. Uh, but this, the, the fact that there's just this one uh, icon in this page, I think, speaks to the gap that uh, is, exists in the industry um, for how to actually analyze data within a cultivation facility. Now, if we look at how we could augment that again with our management software, what you get is a robust and real-time view into your business. And so when we think about things like batch data, task data, environmental data, you can actually see how those not only um, impact your specific facility, but you also gain comparative analytics where you can see how one batch did versus another. You can see how one facility is performing versus another, how one team member is performing against other team members, how uh, what task is one team member good at. You can make that you can use this to actually see how uh, maybe somebody needs some additional training in one area, or maybe somebody should be promoted to manager of a specific area because they're exceptional at that. But these um, the data that you're collecting here can actually uh, be used to 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 really uh, combine a lot of different elements from a lot of different parts of your business to then uh, really guide the ship and decide where you should be focusing and uh, what what you should do next. And, and then all of this really heightens your competitive advantage as a business. If you have insight into this and your competitor doesn't, you're now able to, to identify uh, how to deliver products at a, and, and maintain consistency and, and do that at the most cost-effective way possible. This was one of my problems with a lot of the seed to sell tracking softwares was it never gave me any business information. It told me how many plants I had and where they were, but it never gave me any business analytics or you know information that I could use to improve processes and procedures and and really understand what's working and what's not working. And um, I've been pounding my fist for years to try to find something that really gives you the ability to capture all this information so that you can tell a story on what's happened and how to improve it. And so, um, you know, I thought for sure the seed to sell being so close to, you know, helping out with task management, they would develop this more, but they never did. So um, it's, it's imperative to have these tools at your fingertips. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think compliance in itself is a full-time job. And so, uh, the, it's you know the, the the compliance software is a very good at, at managing compliance. Uh, and there's some exceptional products that are out there, but again, you know what you mentioned that's that's definitely a gap that we saw as well, and it's one that we thought that we could uh, that we could help with. And so that's what we focused on is you know the the uh, giving you the day-to-day -day tools so that you can manage your business, and so that you actually get the data that can then funnel into this grander vision of allowing you to really manage your operation with uh, the, the, the full view set of what's happening uh, all the way down to uh, what's happening on the ground within your growth facility. And as you collect yeah, these, this, as you collect these and you're able to and you're mm -hmm. able to collect information, you can start modeling you know successful rooms um, off of all the, all the information you're collecting here from your temperature, humidity, all those ranges, you're able to kind of now uh, model after and really try to improve every time that you have uh, more rooms to collect data after. And so uh, I think this is just uh, allowing you to be smarter every time you're turning on a new room. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, imagine that you have uh, – uh, you, you finished a batch of OG Kush or Gelato or whatever strain it is that you grow in your growth facility. Uh, with this, you immediately know how that batch compared to your other batches. So uh, in this case, you can see, okay, wow, we, we yielded the, you know, the most that we ever yielded. Uh, and then you can say, well, why did that happen? You can actually compare it to the other batches. You can see what the environmental conditions were. You can see what tasks were performed. You can see how much you spent on it. Maybe, maybe you yielded more, but you actually spent more than you ever had, and you're not going to like, actually net any additional profit from that batch. Or uh, what if it actually was the worst performing batch that you ever had? You can figure out what happened there, and then you can see that, um, you know, maybe it was your, your lowest cost batch, but it, it yielded very poorly. Um, or as an example, let's, you mentioned LED lights earlier in the, in the presentation. We're actually working right now on a collaboration with an LED lighting company um, where we're installing, uh, where they are installing LED lights in a growth facility that we're currently monitoring. 
and we're actually going to help them track uh, their lights versus another room that has HID lights installed. And so that we'll actually be able to prove to them the energy savings and uh, track the energy savings versus the yield so that the grower can actually have quantitative data on what it would look like if he converted his entire facility over to LED lights. Uh, so there's a lot of great things that by collecting this type of data, you can actually use to uh, improve uh, your, oper your operational expenses or reduce your operational expenses. Because um, as we mentioned, you know, uh, labor and energy are your, your two highest expenses. So anything you can do there, that's, that's like 75% of your operational expenses right there. I'm salivating and foaming at the mouth hearing you say those things because it's so exciting to know that you can get that granular and capture that information. Uh, this is what is so important for your business. And it's just, uh, uh, yeah, like I said, it's exciting to hear this. It's, uh, it's hard to get that information. Yeah, the, the energy thing is uh, something we're definitely good at. Both me and my business partner, uh, Benjamin, who is our COO, uh, both of us came from solar, so we've got a lot of experience in that realm. And then, uh, again, on the operational side, you know, we've, uh, we've spent a lot of time focusing on how to build products to, to track and improve operational efficiency. So, yeah, we're, we're excited to be doing this. I'm, I'm thrilled when I hear uh, cultivators like yourself say that these tools are important. Um, so, yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're very excited to, uh, to have built what we have so far. And, and we've got a lot of uh, additional ideas in the pipe that we're, that we're working on as well. So you'll see some exciting things coming out in uh, Q1 to 2019. Well, that being said, what if, what, what, what else, if you can kind of uh, tell us some of those things you guys are planning towards for 2019, I'd love to hear kind of what your future growth looks like for this next year and two and what, uh, you know, our, uh, our viewers uh, can expect from you guys and what I can expect from you guys as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we've basically spent the last year building the core platform, uh, which you see here, and what we've been discussing. And now that we've got the core platform built and it's to a, uh, a sufficient level of uh, deployment, we're looking to uh, focus on integrations. And so I mentioned the LED lighting company that we're working with. That's one type of integration that we're working on. Hardware companies uh, such as light companies and control systems uh, we're also interested in integrating with some compliance softwares uh, and then eventually uh, going further down into uh, other types of systems that cover uh, even more of your operational expenses, so things like accounting and uh, workforce and things like that. So we've got uh, a lot of things that we could do, uh, but we've got, you know, our, our focus for uh, the first part of 2019 will be looking at uh, what integrations are the most important to our customers and uh, really bringing those into the platform so that uh, our vision and our, our objective is really to create a, a highly useful tool that becomes uh, the tool that you use on a day-to-day -day basis to manage your operation. Um, so that's our, our definitely uh, our, our moonshot of where we want to go is we want to have you know as many as many useful elements of your business as possible incorporated into uh, the trim application so that it becomes uh, a, a, a comprehensive, a, as comprehensive as possible view of your entire operation. I think it's smart that you guys are going out and looking to kind of form these strategic relationships and alliances with these different folks from compliance software. I think that's a big one. Um, it just opens up a lot of opportunity for folks to use this information you can, you can, you can gather for them. Um, so it's neat to see you guys have that open API and are exploring that quite a bit. Uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, you know you guys have uh, spent the last year in beta, and now that uh, you kind of went to Vegas, are you guys now ready to be used in the market? And if so, um, you know how do our our viewers you know understand the access to this and work with you guys to see if it's a right fit for their business? Yeah, absolutely. I've uh, I just flashed forward a couple of slides to put up our contact information. Um, we yeah we so we spent the last year uh, in a private beta with. Uh, one farm that is located in California and one based in Oregon. Uh, we're uh, yes, we're we're now uh, excited to commercialize the product, and in fact, we're working with the two farms that were in our beta to actually expand into some of their other operations right now. Um, we have a, a pricing model that's based on two different elements. The first is if you uh, if you need hardware, if you need the environmental sensors. 
uh, then we can in, uh, we can sell you those sensors and we can actually install them for you. And so there's an upfront setup fee for that hardware and for that install. And then the other way that we uh, charge is on a monthly basis for the software services themselves. Uh, both the hardware and the software scale with the size of the business. Uh, we have four, a, a four-tier pricing model that starts at small farm, medium farm, large farm, and then finally enterprise farms. Uh, small farm is going to be about two rooms, and then an enterprise farm is closer to about 20 rooms. Um, we <clears throat> would be happy to quote anybody that has uh, interest in trim and uh, give them a product demo. So uh, if you want to reach out, you can reach out to info at trim.io, or you can visit our website, which is just trim.io. Uh, and we're also, I'd say, relatively active on Facebook and exceptionally active on Instagram if you want to follow us there, and it's uh, trim tech for both of those. Uh, yeah, we, we do product demos every day, uh, even if you have uh, interest in it and you're, you're not quite sure whether you want to you wanna go forward with it or not, just reach out to us. We'd be happy to talk to you and see uh, how we could help and, and see if there's a, a system we could work out for you guys. So here's, a, here's a question for you. So let's say it's an existing facility and they've already got an environmental control system that collects all the information for them, say an Argus system or Agritech, Autogrow, whatever they're using. Um, do you do they have to use your hardware? Is there anything specific or proprietary about that that you require it, or can you use your open API to really um, tap into those other um, hardware systems that they're using to collect that information? That's a really good question, Alice. That's one that we get pretty frequently uh, anytime we go to conferences as well, because uh, obviously there are people that have uh, there are cultivation businesses that have um, gone the direction of installing control systems. Uh, and we, we do not intend to compete against systems like Argus. Um, we, we appreciate what those systems do. Uh, we think there's a lot of value in them. And so uh, we, view, we view ourselves as a complement to those systems. And so if you already have, uh, let's say, an Argus system installed, then um, we would work with Argus to actually integrate your sensor data into our software application. Um, <clears throat> we've already had some discussions with some of these control systems, and uh, the overwhelming response that we've gotten is uh, we do not want to do what you're doing and then we tell them that we do not want to do what you're doing <laughs> and, uh, and we uh, have uh, built relationships with the majority of the big ones and uh, are actively working on uh, integrating with their systems. So uh, there are some applications where we might need to install some additional hardware. Uh, if you want the uh, equipment and energy monitoring, we may need to actually install a couple of additional pieces of hardware. Uh, but in the majority of cases, we can uh, we can actually install uh, or we can actually just leverage the, the system that you already have installed, and uh, then you would just pay the monthly service fee for our software. Okay. Um. Who's your competition out there? Who who else is doing this in cannabis? Um, is there anybody else? I know I have been looking and turning over every rock I can find to find something, and it just hasn't been available. Uh, who else is out there? Who 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 else is doing this? Yeah. So uh, actually, the reason we started this is because we saw that there was a gap in the market. So if you look at farm management, it's actually a relatively well known sector of the agricultural technology industry. Uh, there are many products that are built for large-scale agriculture. Um, they install sensors on farm equipment, tractors, uh, weather stations around, and then they help you figure out what fields are the most profitable uh, to plow and what, how, you know, where, when you should seed your corn versus uh, when you should seed your tomatoes, et cetera. Um, when we looked in cannabis, there was really nothing there. Um, so we decided that this was a great market opportunity for us to focus on. And so that's what led us to build the first uh, farm management software specifically built for cannabis. You know, indoor agriculture has a whole different set of problems uh, compared to outdoor. And uh, with that also comes uh, a whole different set of uh, tasks and a whole different way to manage plants. When you then add on that additional layer of cannabis that has a very specific methodology to produce quality cannabis and a very specific uh, uh, compliance regulatory system that uh, needs to be managed, uh, it, it turns into a, a, a much different problem than what the current software systems were built to manage. 
uh, and that's why uh, we we decided to do this. And uh, so right now, I'd say, um, you know, there are some companies that are doing pieces of what we're doing. You know, there's there's systems uh, that do have some task management built in. Um, there are systems that monitor environmental conditions. But what we're doing is really uh, we're the hub to tie all of those pieces together and then give you the information in a really succinct and actionable way so that you can improve your business and, and make day-to-day -day operational improvements. Great answer. Um, all right. I want to wrap this up here. I want you to kind of give a synopsis here today of um, kind of some things to leave our audience with, um, kind of give you your last little shameless plug here to speak about trim. Um, so, yeah, feel free to kind of give some kind of parting comments here on um, on what the audience can expect from trim and what they can do to reach out to you and any other last comments you want to make. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully from this presentation you've taken away some insights into how farm management software can help your business. Um, you know, we, we built Trim, which is the only farm management software specifically built for cannabis, so that we could help businesses just like yourself thrive in this evolving and extremely competitive market. And uh, we think we're doing a good job at that, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Uh, if you want to discuss farm management in more detail, reach out to us at info at trim.io. Uh, you can also request demos there. You can also, uh, if you go to trim.io, we've got a chat uh, window on our website, uh, either myself or a member of our team. We have that pulled up all day. If you want to ask questions about the product there, we're, we're happy to, to discuss anything that is on your mind. And uh, we'd love to give you a product demo and, and see how we can fit into your organization. Matt, I can't thank you enough. I tell you, it was, it was great to meet you in, in Vegas and to really learn more about your business and the product that you're offering. As I said, as an operator, as a consultant, um, we need tools like this to really help us be successful. Um, it's about time we're seeing these come into the space. Uh, and for audience members that are listening to this, you know, when you look at the operational expense to run this monthly, it's going to pay for itself tenfold when you realize the type of um, information you can get back from it and the direct impact you can make on your bottom line by using that information properly to make business decisions. And so i kind of leave you with that as, um, as we're moving into 2019, looking at technology and how it's coming into the space and improving what we've been doing over the last 20, 30, 40 years in our basements and coming into now into regulated markets. These are the tools that are really going to push us forward. Um, there's a huge demand and huge need to be progressive and to step outside of our old ways, and this technology allows us to be smarter, more efficient, and sustainable businesses. So, uh, Matt, I want to thank you again for getting on. He is with Trim, and we discussed today the three best practices for bottom line growth. Uh, my name is Ella Smith. I want to thank Cannabis Tech for hosting this today. Uh, we're the American Cannabis. Uh, we will see you next month. Everyone have a happy holiday season. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.